And the tragedy at Oxford resulting in dozens of threats, forcing schools to go virtual or cancel classes altogether. Charges have been filed in 85 school threats in three counties. Law enforcement and school leaders are asking parents to talk with their students about their emotions and the ongoing copycat threats. But what does that look and sound like? 7 Action News reporter Nana Sancio Bonsu has more from a town hall with mental health professionals and how parents can begin these conversations. Be available, be together, um, maintain your routines, um, help them feel safe. Experts at the Guidance Center, a mental health and wellness agency in Metro Detroit, are sharing some tips parents may need to help comfort students as they continue to process what happened at Oxford High School. Validate and accept their feelings. Experts say it's important to keep an open line of communication, but that looks different for children depending on their age. Katherine Lentz is the director of Infant and Young Child Mental Health Services. She says with younger children, It's important to be brief but honest. Um, sharing too much information can really overwhelm them and make them more stressed. For high schoolers, social worker Latorian Jackson says after you've had the conversation with your child, it's time to discuss a safety plan. So letting them know, like, you know, I want to make sure on the home end, you and I have a plan of how we're going to communicate with each other. If you feel like, you know, you are in trouble at school or something is going down. There are also signs that these mental health professionals say parents should be on the lookout for to know if their children are struggling, whether it's with anxiety or fear. But if they're unable to get the sleep that they need, they're unable to fall asleep, um, if they're waking up through the night, those are all uh, signs for concern. Social worker Michael Burton says pay attention to behavioral changes. Middle schoolers are trying to become their own person, become more independent, move away from the caregiver. If they're then becoming extra clingy or then wanting to be around you more than usual, that could be a sign that something is going on. During the virtual meeting, parents were also able to send in their questions. Any advice on how to handle a second grader who has been told a few times now by a classmate that his cousin goes to a school where people are killed and that there was a school shooting? Lent says it's important to tell the truth and also give your child reassurance. You can talk about the ways in which the cousin and the family members and the adults are working to keep him safe, keep them safe, um, the actions that are being taken. Parents can also take action in their own homes by monitoring social media use. Jackson says adults can look into apps and websites like Bark that manages and filters what their kids are doing. It monitors their conversations. It can alert you on things that they're viewing, new slang words that are being used. And reminding students that the OK to Say website is anonymous and a safe place for them to report anything that they may hear or see. I'm Nana Santio Bonsu for 7 Action News.